Okay, so our next speaker is uh, Ms. Katerina Sikoma. In 2010, she was awarded her Bachelor from the philo uh, Philology Department of the University of Patras, after which she continued with her postgraduate studies in Modern Greek and Computer Comparative Literature, which is her main passion in research. She has participated in projects related to modern Greek and the promotion of the Greek language, while she has also attended several training seminars on the fields of psychology and in the cultural learning. As an author, you will find her name and conference proceedings, book reviews, literature editing, and open access publications in the electronic press. An active member of society, she has represented Greece as a team member of the European Parliament, attended the Youth Parliament as team member, and participated in the European Parliament simulation organized by the Institute of Research and Training on European Affairs from the University of Piers. From the beginning of her studies, she has been continuously pursuing new opportunities and exploring new horizons through live learning seminars and trainings, teaching practices, scientific supervisions, research, organization of scientific fora, oral presentations, and social work. She is currently further extending her studies with a Bachelor of Spanish Language and Culture at the Greek Open University. And today she is here with us to discuss about comparative literature and the culture. Mm. Starting, I just want to take a moment uh, tonight to thank you all for being here. Thank you for giving me the chance to um, to share with you, to express some of the questions that I mean again in my theoretical and um, researching field. Sorry. Um, and of course, uh, I welcome you. Uh, all to this open workshop and uh, this evening, uh, this event tonight. And I congratulate the organizing team of uh, Intermediate for the great job they do. I wish uh, to all the participants to have a special and unforgettable moment uh, in Patras and a fruitful week for your interest, your work, your uh, studies, whatever you do. Uh, my issue is a little bit different because I I'm trying here to present to you um, some uh, aspects of comparative literature and the interculturalism and intercultural uh, education. Um, I will present to you uh, some terms, methods from uh, the theory, and I suggest uh, only some uh, aspects or uh, some ways of thinking about them, how we can use the literature as a tool in the uh, didactic uh, act. Uh, this paper's uh, aim is uh, to illustrate some aspects of uh, the theoretical thought of uh, intercultural studies and literary studies in the general field of humanities. Secondly, it reflects on the exploitation of the theoretical methodist approach, terminology, tools that could uh, form a helpful and fruitful material in the didactic act and uh, in school, um, and give new perspectives in the way of understanding each other and the way of building a world of peace, um, as was the old uh, vision of the world. Um, as we know, uh, culture and cultural um, are concepts uh, in everyday speech, common use, that uh, express aspects widely popular in the Western uh, world. We define as culture the states uh, in a central way of view and experience of every part of our lives and the world around us. Moreover, we include in the variety of definitions of culture aspects that are uh, shaped by the historical, political, social and cultural uh, contexts in which we live, and of course, uh, they represent them. The world today uh, and our societies are multicultural. As long as uh, the new conditions of living are require large groups of people to travel and uh, move in another place, far away from the place of birth and the origin, for reasons for, of work, studies, or to seek better living standards. This is not uh, a modern uh, only phenomenon in the antiquity, migration, mandatory after leading of conquerors or voluntary, nomadic, was known. 
and always the mixing of different cultural groups caused various changes in social uh, stratification and the relations of uh, these groups uh, that, they, that uh, had to coexist, uh, to collaborate or to fight for their independence uh, changed. Uh, for example, we can remember um, effects on cultural and historical levels or cases of diglossia and uh, bilingualism in social point of view. Uh, for example, for, for Spanish and Arabic uh, coexistence in uh, medieval years, um, in uh, Iberic uh, Peninsula. Um, And, uh, um, of course, we have to uh, keep in mind that uh, these interrelations need new uh, ways of uh, thinking, of manage and uh, um, collaborations between people and uh, the states. Um, Now, according to the Universal uh, Declaration of Human Rights, uh, it is mandatory and should be fully respected to provide quality education for all in order to maintain the peace among the nations of planet. And here, to think about the, uh, the terms, we have inter-education. Uh, this prefix inter means interaction, that, uh, that both two poles are affected by uh, the one. Sorry. Another term is uh, trans, another uh, prefix that is a very modern uh, nowadays in uh, uh, the theory. Trans and trans means uh, the ways of life too in a multi disciplinary context and the ability to denote mobility against and across frontiers. Uh, derivative from, from uh, this uh, prefix is uh, transcendental, transference, transnationalism, uh, terms that uh, uh, are used in uh, theory uh, for post-colonial and colonial uh, in the modernism. Other prefixes is the cross, that uh, means, uh, gives the meaning of this uh, uh, bi-directional um, effect and impact of the, the two poles, mm -hmm. and multi, that means the variety, without evaluating. Now, on the other hand, we have I place literature tonight, which often is examined as a part of culture. Usually, in intercultural studies, language and linguistic parameters are mentioned as object of research. And this is quite expected if we keep in mind the theory of our identity, national identity, that makes very understandable the concept that language is a factor of differentiating an ethnic group, a nation, from another, along with religion, had common traditions, common historical sufferings, etc. But, however, the literature is art. Uh, for semiotics, and uh, here we have uh, the uh, Saussure, the concept of Saussure, language is a code that uh, um, contains signs. The sign is the whole that results from the association of the signifié and the signified. And literature is one level above. Uh, Bart, for example, or Roman Jakobson, um, and many other uh, theoretics uh, and academians of uh, the 20th century, uh, talked about literature that contains language and the aesthetic value. So here we talk about art fact, uh, work of art, and not only um, language uh, products. Comparisons. Here it comes. This is the method. Uh, is found in is found in uh, 
various fields of sciences and knowledge and in the humanities too. Uh, the comparative approach of two or more data or phenomena constitutes research methods. The Lectio Comparationis, in Latin, is a category that we find in a human thought from antiquity. The semels, the proportion, the comparison, contrast, compare and contrast are ways of language, both in poetic use and in the referential um, uh, use of language. Today, it has multiple benefits, this method, as describing and analyzing a common or similar criteria, varied objects, uh, and achieve deepening, and, uh, the deepening the substance and operation of test data, tested data and conclusions, um, and trying to, try to find conclusions that are equal or unequal and beyond because uh, in the last uh, decade we don't talk about equal and unequal, we talk about similarities, analogies, and beyond. Why we use it, this, the comparison, as a tool? Because uh, we need to observe and explore our identity, uh, and to test the theory, in the theoretical level, and the axis, the points of view. This is the uh, directional, the bi-directional uh, testing. Comparative literature. Um, in academic or theoretical level, we examine in comparative literature different literatures, different uh, works from uh, different uh, languages. For example, we can uh, compare uh, Spanish and Greek uh, literature, or French and uh, Greek, uh, modern Greek. Uh, sometimes we, whatever, it's open, it's wide open, um, the comparison today. We can compare and contrast periods of literary uh, production. For example, Romanticism and Modernism. Genres. And uh, here we have, for example, a theatrical uh, play and a poem, or uh, a film, a movie, and a poem. Motives and themes. Here, this is very literary focused, and uh, um, uh, the close reading um, offers many motives or themes that can be analyzed and give. Uh, similarities or uh, we can um, uh, focus and um, in specific things that uh, can emerge uh, the, um, universal, the universal way of thinking of the human. And uh, uh, beyond this, the literary theory. The literary theory um, uh, uh, is uh, separated to terminology. For example, what is the world literature, the pet literature, the dream of Goethe. Uh, today we talk about the multi-ethnic literature in the modern work and the world's uh, the terms of trans literature, cross uh, cultural, uh, comes in uh, the discussion in the dialogue of the academics. And two, uh, I have only two here crucial uh, terms and uh, that uh, gave us many uh, ways of uh, reading. Uh, I mentioned uh, intertextuality by Julia Kristeva. And dialogic imagination by uh, from uh, Michael uh, Bakhtin. Uh, intertextuality um, refers to um, the the relations that uh, have uh, that they exist uh, between two texts, the anterior and the. Uh, posterior. For example, uh, what is the relation between Ulysses uh, of um, uh, um, 
joint. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Sorry. And um, from all uh, the DC of. Uh,